please, I am into a marriage that every day I'm going to work and my husband doing nothing, how they're smoking, drinking, and when you speak and you stone beating, red legs beating onto your head, and what am I going to do about it to change? Okay, so she's married to a man who drinks, who doesn't go to work, yes. smokes and beat her up. What yeah. should she do? What leads to the beating? I want us to be real. Most of us women, our mouths are sharper than razor. This man is already down and out. And then you want to stamp on him. He would react. And the reaction would be blows. A man that is at home, not going to work. Was he working before? If he was, what led to his staying at home? Did he lose his job? Or you married him knowing he was a layabout? You see, that marriage is not easy. I'm not beating you down, my sister. I was in an abusive marriage. But I was the agent of that abuse. Because my mouth was very sharp. My husband was a military man. You can imagine a man in the office who is a senior officer who controls men. When he says a word, they all say, I, I, sir. And then you are talking to him as if it's nothing. He cannot tolerate that. So I want us to go to the beginning. Examine yourself. What do I say to him before he begins to beat me? Should I change the tactics that I use in addressing him? If you married him a smoker, a drinker, you know what comes for, I mean, drinking. Because when you drink, you lose your senses. You are no longer in control of yourself. If you married him like that, believing that you would change him, then you have to stay in there and continue to pray. But if circumstances of life turned him to what he has become, you have to pray. And then avoid situations that would aggravate him. And then you pick up your cross and pray. There is nothing prayer cannot change. But you have to pay the price. It's not automatic. You can't go to work and cook for him or you refuse to cook for him or when you cook and he's eating you are telling him you sat down there the whole day you didn't do anything now you are eating see your mouth so you can eat how much money did you bring for you to eat oh you want to eat pala you want to eat fresh fish when your money can't buy your kweko and you expect that man to keep quiet sometimes we are the architects of our problem in this marriage but like my sister said if that is not the situation, you have examined yourself. And in all honesty, you found out that you have not in any way made this man to beat you. And the beating is getting to a dangerous level. You need to step out of that marriage for a season. But I don't want to say I can bet on it. If you find yourself in that situation as women, we will not be the lamb we are likely to have overstepped our bounds by the kind of abuse we will reign on that man's head. So we really need to temper our mouths. We really need to humble ourselves. Because you are the provider today. You don't know tomorrow. That big job that is fetching you so much money, you are big madam at your place of work. What happens if you are retrenched and you have to sit at home? And then the man, the Lord picks that man up raises him up and sets him amongst kings what do you do so basically i would say the woman has a lot of work to do and that is humble yourself and become a prayer warrior because there is nothing god cannot do and i want every woman who has the opportunity to go and watch this movie the war room when you watch that movie i you see the, the, the power of mentoring. An older woman mentoring a younger woman to be the best. That is what we should be doing here. The older ones. The ones who have experienced life. Let us mentor the younger ones. So that you don't go into marriage believing it's a bed of roses. We all get carried away with the landmark, with the sugar band and everything. The six-year cake. And you want to dance uh, ada, ada, and you think 
from then on it is bliss it is not it's a lot of work for your marriage to work you must be committed that you are in it to win it and nothing is going to shake you tempests will come problems will come in various forms but you must be determined that i'm not getting out of here i'm going to work at it and the only way you can work at it is if you partner with the holy spirit with a lot of prayer and fasting praise the lord Okay, so we'll have our last comment come from Pastor Shola David Bora. Um, I think Pastor Roti um, really made the point I was going to make, you know, about um, just making sure you're, you're not the one that is making the situation worse. Too many times we're trying to help the Holy Spirit. And the point I made earlier about who are your eyes on because you know when you go into marriage i remember when i was going to marriage i i one of my prayer points was father into your hands i commend my spirit because it, you don't know the person you are marrying no matter you might have known the person for years you know but yeah it's you and god that you're going into the marriage and i'm telling you the truth you know if the real person shows up after marriage even you you are, you've been pretending all along. They've never seen your hair untidy. You, you're always well behaved. You, the real you, shows up after the marriage, you know. And it's so important that, one, our eyes are on the Lord for all our needs, honestly. I remember listening to a, an interview that um, Michelle Obama had. I just stumbled on it on CNN. And she was talking about how her marriage was getting very rocky when the um, husband decided to be a politician he would disappear on sunday night and come back on friday she alone with two young children you know and things were so bad he was about to break up and she told herself that okay what are my needs she said she looked at herself in the mirror what are my needs okay i need somebody to help me with this i need somebody to help me with this and she realized that part of her frustration was that she was expecting this man to give her some things which one he wasn't available to give her he was not um, able to give her and she said when she actually broke down the things that she needed decided okay her mother can maybe help her with this she will look to this for this she will look to this that it took a lot yes a support system that it took a lot of the pressure because there are things we're asking our husbands to give they don't have it in them to give i'm telling you what you're looking for, and the man doesn't have it. And it brings a lot of frustration. So the point I'm making is, let us, one, keep our eyes on the Lord as a provider, okay? And look at support systems for some things that we might not be able to find or get from our marriage. And pray. If you haven't watched The War Room, go and read it. Go and watch it, okay? It will help you greatly. And the Lord will help us because it, there's a, it's a process and it requires a lot of patience. But if we genuinely are trying to please God, not anybody, relatives, friends, or whatever, just keeping our eyes on God and reverencing our husband. One more thing before I leave the mic. It wasn't an accident that God said, wives love your husbands, love your wives and wives respect or reverence your husband if he had said the opposite you know women love easily where we love we like our love is so easy to us now it doesn't mean for a man love is nothing a man can sleep with 10 girls it's nothing to them what a man craves like air oxygen is respect oxygen he needs respect so that's why god god told us to give him the thing that he needs like oxygen and we women including myself it's easier to respect your pastor it's easier to respect your boss it's easier to respect every man but your husband and we're doing the exact opposite of what god expects us to do try respect you'll be amazed at the results praise the name of the lord Hallelujah.